All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We have Mo Man against TT1 Mo Man from, of course, Virus and TT1 from Fnatic, my old teammate. Of course, if you guys don't know already, this is EG LZ Gamer alongside with me. He's going to be casting, being that Zerg and Terran competitive insight that we so, so desperately love. I know, and it's going to really pay off here as we have a fabulous Zerg like Mo Man mm -hmm. from Team Virus. It'll be really great for a Zerg actually being here because reading Moman is like <laughs> reading hieroglyphics to me. It's like a foreign language to even it Zerg players most of the time. So <laughs> <laughs> we never have any idea what's going on. It's like, what is Moman doing? He's making Hydralisk, <laughs> you know? But he makes it work. So he does, hey man. man. Can't rock the boat. He can at all. Well, we are on Belshire Beach, top left hand corner. We have as the yellow Protoss, Fnatic MSI TT1. Bottom right hand corner, we have our purple Zerg Virus Moman. And as I was saying before, TT1 used to be my teammate. I was on mm -hmm. Team Fnatic MSI as a professional Terran. And since then, of course, I've gotten to casting, but I know TT1 very well. He's one of my close, close friends. Uh, probably one of my best friends in the entire scene. Probably slightly below you, Jake. Yeah, well, of course. Of course. Of course. He's nowhere near as handsome as you. But uh, as well, I've been friends with both these players for a long time now. So, um, yeah, I've practiced with yep. these guys for quite a few tournaments. But TT1 is the more abusive economic yes. style. I do want to get into that picture. He yep. does mind games and tries to, first off, he tries to get you to do a certain thing. And off of that, he'll try to take an advantage economically. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting how he does it. It's hard to explain it conceptually. Uh, we'll just have to wait to see what he does, and I'll give I'm you sure the examples. I'm sure he'll show us it. Exactly. I'll, I'm sure. Positive he'll, yeah, he'll do I'm something positive. like that. We actually find... Yeah, I was about to say, we don't see a pull going down from Moman. There's the pull. He does go for a 15 pull. That's kind of a little bit later than most people. Most yep. people like getting a little bit quicker. This means that the probe could uh, initially block the hatchery longer or something like that. We do see the probe is being annoying, harassing. You know what I would like to see more of Protosses do? Um, and I usually only see uh, very few foreigners do it, mm -hmm. like Huck is an example. Um, a lot of Koreans do it. It's where they go behind the mineral line, and they actually deny you from mining I an know. entire mineral patch. I do that. Like, the whole time. I know. You can't. You have to actually, like, send drones all the way around just to hit it, and it runs off. You so send the drone back to mine. It goes back. It's exactly. It's like a fly that won't die. What, what LZ Gamer is talking about is you basically place a probe over here and you tell it to mine this individual mineral and before it actually mines the mineral completely you press stop or you move it. Mm -hmm. Tell it to stop mining and then you mine again and what it ends up doing is makes every single drone not go to that patch because it's already been mined and it says screw you man. <laughs> exactly. So it's you're working with instead of eight mineral patches you're working with seven. Yeah. You can absolutely like nerf your your opponent right there. Exactly. Then and there. That's the S right click micro right there pretty good sir it is it's pretty good but i must say um i don't know if we talked about it but i really like this map for zerg versus protoss this is a really good map yeah, in my opinion should. for zvp as we can see this overlord has like amazing positioning over here at the protoss natural base it can almost see anything so it can o it can read safely what his opponent's exactly. doing right off the bat I mean, he already knows the Forge is down. He already yeah. knows the Nexus is down. That's exactly what you want to be having. Mo Man, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe on like third, halfway in 30 supply, he goes and takes a third hatchery. Yeah, I mean, he might as well at this point. We do see that he is mining gas. No uh, no Zergling speed or met metabolic boost oh, is coming. Till okay, it just okay. started. I was about to say, I was wondering what he was mining gas for. I was thinking maybe he was going to try some kind of lair type mm -hmm. play. But it does look like Mo Man's playing pretty standard. Second Queen is a little bit delayed, I, I feel like. You know, the the hat the natural expansion is up for Mo Man, but there is no Queen there yet. Second yeah. Queen's just about to come out. A lot of players will time it so that right as their expansion comes out, they have that Second Queen. Yeah, that's probably actually in due to the fact that he went something like a 15 right. spawning pool that really probably. delayed his spawning pool. So, of course, it delays his Queen. Queens need to be created from, well, not from, but needs the spawning pool first before coming up. Now we do see TT1, interesting enough, only going one gas. So we might be seeing some sort of four to six gate pressure in this beginning stage. A lot of times Protoss will get at least two gases. That way can they, they can get a large, large sentry count. But now that he doesn't have the second gas, it's saying, where is your 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 probes that you're originally going to going to? And right. obviously it's going to be minerals. Okay, what's your minerals going to be doing? 
Exactly. Um, you know, this actually looks like the beginning of the build Kiwi Kaki did at the BlizzCon Invitational versus Chef, where he actually went a nine gate off one gas. What? So, yeah, nine gate. It was like all Zealot Stalker nonstop. And it was so many units so quickly that he, he was able to produce. It was actu absolutely scary. Yeah. Well, we do see something prepared. See, this forge, we can already see that it is being chrono boosted. The plus one is trying to come out right now. And when that, when he's chrono boosting something like that, all you think of is timing. I think we're going to be seeing a very... Wait a minute. We don't even have a cybernetics for it? Whoa. That is crazy. So we might be seeing something like a 1-1 one, one timing, but Warp Gates is 10 years away. I didn't even notice that we didn't have a Cybernetic score. That is, either. that is insane. I just automatically assumed it yeah, was me at the too. wall, me the too. expansion. <laughs> like, oh, he's walling off with it somewhere. It's just so, so unnatural. So this is definitely a very, very weird build coming out from TT1. I'm not sure what we're going to be expecting. Yeah, I'm not so sure either. I mean... The Overlord does see the Zealots moving out, you know, and this is a big rush distance map, so yep. he might have a long time. And that one Zealot actually is wandering in the wrong direction, and he does get picked off by these Zerglings. But plus one is up, so he will be able to two-shot Zerglings now. We do already see that that third base had been taken by Moman, so Moman is going for the economic route. Is TT1 going to be able to capitalize off of this? That's going to be the big question. And yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. This is not a lot of Zealots. Only five and eight Roaches. Nine Roaches now in production. They will be out in time to intercept all of these Zealots. Yeah, I mean, Roaches are so good against Zealots. And even plus one doesn't really help that much against the Roaches. No. And we see the four Roaches are over oh here. No. And they're going to fight on creep. These Roaches can tie them back and forth while waiting for... Uh, reinforcement Zerglings are coming to counter, but he doesn't really want to use the Zerglings in this battle because they really don't, they don't really don't get cost yeah. effectiveness out of. Yeah, definitely they do get two shot. As I was saying before, there they go. Every single one of those Zerglings just perish very, very quickly. What do we have in the back of TT1 space? It looks like double Stargate. Wow, TT1 doing a very, very interesting build. Not actually opting to get anything more in that forge. The roaches are bearing down, but it looks like he's only having four roaches right now. So the real problem is going to be those void rays that come out. I do expect them void rays. Yes, they are. Do we wow. have plus one? No, it's going to be just a uh, warp gate. And this is going to be just a two base pressure. It's absolutely fine. It might be a little bit slower. We're already at the 10 minute mark, but I this is Belshire Beach. I, I'm sorry to cut you off, no Grey Torp, but I want to point out something. If we look at the probe line of, never mind, he just fixed it, maybe. Yeah, it looks like he just fixed it for a, about a minute there. There's about eight probes following one probe oh in TT1's no. mineral Tell line. Tell me it isn't so. Yeah, so they were just, they were just playing follow <sighs> the leader, not doing their work. It's so hard to find good help these days. I know. Seriously, every single one is just so sad. And of course, what uh, LZ Gamer is referring to is if you have all your drones, and let's say they're rallied to a drone instead of a mineral line, they will actually not mine. They'll start following that one probe. And of course, the probe's just going back and forth, so they're just looking at them. Yeah. Literally, they just look. They're just staring at them. How annoying. But oh my god, this Overlord is right outside of that Void Ray range. It's literally like inches away. There are four void rays out, but oh, excuse me. TT1 has been scattered with an overlord apparently. Yeah. And the double Sargates were found. Yeah, he did create an overseer and run in there, and he did scout out the the two Stargates. And but the overseer did die to the void ray, so at least there's no contaminate or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But we d it does look like TT1 is moving down. This is kind of what we were talking about earlier. How he loves to do, I want to say, semi-abusive builds, where he's trying to abuse like certain units and army compositions to gain the advantage. Yeah. And we do see, I mean, this is a tough map for PVZ in particular, just because the mobility factor, it's so, so difficult. You see TT1 bearing down on this opponent, looks like going straight into the natural. Hydralists are out nine on the way right now. Roaches are on the left-hand side. TT1 needs to be very careful. He should not be pushing into this position, but uh-oh, here we go. The sport crawl is gonna be worked on. TT1 now realizes Joining up with six Void Rays, and now here's going to be the huge, huge warping by the units. A lot of Stalkers in here, and there's a lot of Void Rays. Holy crap, is this going to be enough Hydras? I don't think so. He needs to back up quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, he is picking off these units, but he's also fighting on Creep, you know? But, wow, do Void Rays do a lot of damage, even uncharged? Yeah, 
they do, of course. And those stalkers are, being, are just the ones that are being so, so beefy. They're the ones taking most of the damage. Now, here is going to be the huge, huge surround coming from two sides. But it looks like there's roaches and hydras were caught up a little bit. The Void Rays are going to be focused down. It looks like Transfuses go off. Very nice by Mo Man. But there are still a lot of Void Rays left. It looks like they are going to be targeted down. The left-hand side is being cleaned up a little bit. But there keeps getting more units being warped right now. TT1 is being thinned out. It looks like the hydras are going to be too much. And just one-shots every single one of these Void Rays. Now the drones are going to join up. And it looks like TT1 does not have a means, I don't think, to kill those hydras. Those hydras are just so... So strong with their DPS and uh, on creep. Yeah, these Hydra, Hydra Ling is doing a great job of attacking from both angles. He still does have these spore crawlers from different sides, and they they are pushing the Void Rays back. We do see though that he is targeting down one of the spore crawlers. But here comes more Hydras and Zerglings streaming in from both sides. Is Zerg going to be able to produce enough? He did lose all of his queens pretty much, so he is going to be short on injections. But it, he does have enough that it looks like to push him back. TT1 does not really have any more Void Rays or any more powerful hitters, just Stalkers and Zealots. But, you know, that might be enough. He is only mm. on two Queens at the moment. So, yeah, he has to rebuild them to get his natural and main expanding. But here comes the push, and he is being flanked by all Zerglings and Roaches, and he is fighting on creep, so that's giving Zerg the, the great speed advantage that he needs to catch up to those Stalkers. It looks like TT1 is trying to focus down a lot of these units. Mo Man is losing units left and right, but finally pushing... Uh, his opponent, TT1, back all the way. It looks like these pylons will go down. In the end, TT1 is behind 75 to 107 supply. And it looks like he's just now started up a lot more probes. Let's go ahead and look at income tab. They're just about even. TT1, not doing terrible, but look at the army tab. A thousand difference. That's a big, big difference. Yeah, well, you know, Zerk does have the army supply right now, and that's great. He is actually behind in our economy. Like, he actually doesn't have as many probes as the Protoss. TT1 that whole time was constantly building probes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Zerg, uh, Moman did lose some probes here, or lose some drones here and there. So, you know, it kind of might keep TT1 in this. He is trying to take a third. He does have a lot of sentries in his army now, so that's going to allow him to be able to cut off all these different areas with force fields. Yeah, the big problem is TT1 doesn't have that power hitting unit which is let's say something like high templars or the colossus we do see two robotic facilities going down now i've seen this before he likes to go double immortals a lot of times but it also could be a double colossus knowing that hey i need to sprint over to get something like colossus and getting just one at this time is not going to do it let me go ahead and get multiple colossus at the same time knowing that i'm going to be off of let's say five or six gas right but uh you know what? i'm just going to make a prediction right now i think it might actually be immortals based on how many centuries that there are on the field yeah i mean it could be immortals but i would rather see colossi when you make zerg make those hydralis getting those colossi in your army does make him a lot less efficient, but here goes some force fields down. Zer Mo Man is trying to be aggressive, but those are some really good force fields, cutting a lot of his army in half. A lot of Hydras are actually just sitting over here not doing anything. Now they're starting to get into the fight. More force fields going down, cutting the Zerg's army in half, but Mo Man's doing a great job of focusing this Nexus, and he might actually get this Nexus here before long. A flank of Zerglings and Roaches, and there's just so much Zerg here attacking from multiple angles, and this is what I was talking about earlier, and the GG. And TT1 is going to fall to the power of Moment. It looks like Moment was just too strong in that defense. I have to say, that was great defense. Break it down for me. How did Moment defend against that double void area? Because at first I thought, okay, yeah, he definitely had it. And then all of a sudden, that DPS was so, so powerful. Yeah. Well, the p the strength of the Void Ray Gateway Army composition is just yeah insane. Like, even when you ha you're like, oh, I have Hydralisk. I'm fine. It's only Void Rays. Void Rays kill Hydras fast. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And the problem is Void Rays outrange Hydras, even with the upgrade. So it's mm. hard to get into the, the area where you can actually start focusing them down. But what happened was is that Mo Man got into a position to where he was able to attack from both angles after his opponent pushed in on him, and he really got able to use the Hydra speed buff on that creep to get in there and start taking down those key units, which were the Void Rays. That's the big thing. You know, I, I noticed two different occurrences where... TT1 was able to regroup and then attack his opponent. And that was both of those times where the Hydras were off of creep, and all yep. of a sudden they couldn't go up on his opponent. That's a huge, 
movement increase, by the way. It's like over one. Yeah. Over one that you get increased, so it g- gets some like it's two to scary. three. It's like yeah, it's like so slow, slow to and then so <laughs> fast. Yeah, exactly. There's no median ground for hydrolisk no. either. They're slow as molasses, or they're really really fast. Fast as lightning. Lightning. Good one. Thank Good you. one. Nevertheless, we're gonna go into game number two and check out if TT1 can come back or if Moman's gonna take it 2-0. Moman looking really good. Join us, guys. We're gonna be back after this break.